Good morning, church. Welcome to worship today. It is good to have Lydia here this morning, Karen's daughter. And it is good to have our four new members here. Can they just raise their hand? <laughs> and along with Ray are um, members of Marin Lutheran Church to make sure I do it right, because if I don't, they will let my husband know, right? <laughs> Welcome to Lori and to Jeff as well. On Friday, I buried Eleanor Lyon, and in my sermon, I spoke of the love that members here had for Eleanor. And so you were all standing around that grave with me and her family uh, who were there. Today is a good day. It is the last Sunday of the church year, and then next Sunday will be Advent. Can you believe it? Yeah. So I wonder if non-church people get as stressed out as we do when we come to the first Sunday in Advent. They probably don't, but we, we're like, uh-oh, four candles, and then it's going to be the day. At the back of the church on your way out, please do take an Advent calendar. Our friends at Bethlehem Lutheran Church in Santa Rosa, who have a wonderful new pastor, Pastor Tyler Jensen, um, they accidentally ordered too many. So they gave us a gift of 100. So take one as you go out. And if you have a grandchild, you may take another one. No one will call the police. Welcome to worship. Good morning, Elam. Here are our announcements for today. Um, if you missed the transition team meeting yesterday, uh, you can still share your thoughts on our website. We have a place that you can answer questions and send it in, or you can grab a paper copy from the bulletin board in the welcome area. So we are wrapping up our small group meetings this month in November. So if you haven't had a chance to give us your feedback, please do. Uh, Petaluma's annual interfaith community Thanksgiving service is going to be this coming Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And so see the announcement page for more information. If you have never attended one of these, it's incredibly special. We have the Christian community coming together with our Muslim brothers and sisters and our Jewish brothers and sisters in one service. So it's beautiful, beautiful. Please don't miss it Tuesday. If you want to be there in person, you may. It's at St. John's Episcopal Church. Yeah. Um, we are in need of some volunteers to help with the soundboard and with the streaming service uh, so that we can continue to have our very high quality live stream online each week. So Andy, Paul, and Kevin are weary and need some help. So. Uh, again, they're going to be setting up a training soon, and so if you are interested, if you like tech, or if you want to learn how to do some tech, um, see the announcement page for more information. And please read this. We have lots more announcements, but that's all I'm going to do for now, so thank you. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. And you are good, good. Oh. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty and ever-living God, you anointed your beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven, and he came to the ancient one and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read Psalm 93 responsively with me. The Lord is king, robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. The Lord has made the world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up, O Lord, the waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, mightier is the Lord who dwells on high. Your testimonies are very sure, and holiness befits your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. Would you please stand for the Holy Gospel? for this festival Sunday of Christ the King is found in the gospel according to St. John, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? 
Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Would the children please come forward for the children's message? Stella. Hello, Lucas. And there is Junie. So it is so good to see everyone today. Stella was here for the last children's message. I think that's probably going to get you extra bonbons when you get to heaven, right? <laughs> Two children's messages in a row. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little march. So we're going to start here and we're going to march all the way around and I, I know, Stella, weird, right? Okay, I see your face, even though I just see your eyes. So today is Christ the King Sunday. It's when we recognize and acknowledge and we say, Jesus, you are king. And we just sang a song, Jesus is the king of my heart. But what I'm going to do when we start going around is I am going to say, who is the king of your heart? And then you're, Lucas? Oh my gosh, you found flat Jesus already. He's kind of been hanging out around the baptismal font. I put him there because I have a little gift for the new members and I wanted him to watch over the gift. Yeah, yeah, so good, good for you. So I'm going to ask the question and you're going to follow me. We're going to kind of be marching. If you want to put your knees up like you're really marching like you're a soldier, you can, but you don't have to. The king, who is the king of your heart? And you're going to yell out, Jesus. And then I'm going to say, he is. And what did we keep singing in that song? Good. good. Right. I woke up in the morning hearing people singing, good, good, oh. I mean, I just kept hearing that in my head. Lauren thought that was funny when I told her. So I'm going to say, he is. And you're going to answer, good. And then I'm going to say, he is. And you're going to answer, good. And then I'm going to ask the question all over again. And if the congregation, they sort of like playing games too, I'm going to let them say it with us. Is that all right? Yeah, okay, all right. Okay, well, here, let's go. This is a children's message where you're going to get a little exercise, okay? Okay, all right. Now I'm going to start here. You're going to be behind. Hey, Aiden, you want to get the cross? Oh, the cross is up there. Okay, right. Good, Pastor. Good. Good sense of direction. Bad sense of direction. You did a good job as a crucifer today. It was Aiden's first time as a crucifer. Okay. All right, you ready? Who is the king of my heart? Oh, oh, we gotta be stop. We got that was weak. I'm gonna do it again. Everyone, everyone's gonna help you. I hardly heard you. Where did you say anything, you guys? Okay, Jesus, say it loud, say it loud. Say it loud so the Episcopalians can hear us. All right. <laughs> Who is the king of our hearts? Jesus. He is? Good. He is? Good. Who is the king of our hearts? Jesus. He is? Good. He is? Good. One more time. Who is the king of our hearts? Jesus. He is? Good. He is? Oh, did we lose some kids? Oh. <laughs> so we're going to say a prayer, and then you can sit down, Lucas. All right? Okay, pray. it's a pray after me prayer. All right. We're going to stand and pray, okay, Harper? Okay. Dear Jesus, 
Thank you so much for being the king of my heart. Thank you for making me a prince or a princess. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. And all God's children say, Amen. Okay, Prince Harper, good to see you. Princess Junie, Princess Stella. start my sermon, I also want to say that it is good to see Bob Wong with his beloved Meta here today. We have been praying for you, Bob. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts and minds be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our creator and our redeemer. Amen. So Christ the King Sunday is kind of a latecomer as far as festivals go. I mean, Christmas was around the 4th century, and Christ the King was our last festival that was instituted by Pope Pius IX, and it was in 1925. What was happening in 1925, you say? Well, Mussolini was gaining power in Italy, and Adolf Hitler was gaining power in Germany. And the Pope felt that having Christ the King Sunday, saying that Christ is the King of the universe, was the church's nevertheless to the godlessness and the evil that was in the world. So, today, we assert that as well. Christ the King Sunday is our nevertheless to the evil and the splintering of our country and our world. Jesus Christ is Lord, and he will reign forever and ever and ever. So that was nice, but what does that mean for us in our daily lives, right? Let's look in our rear view mirror for a minute at Jesus' time. In Jesus' day, the people are oppressed by the Roman government. They long for political and religious freedom, and they ask God for another king. They've had kings before. They ask God for a king to liberate them. So God goes beyond their expectations. God gives them Jesus. But This king, this king of the Jews, is different than a normal king. This king rides on a donkey instead of a chariot. This king does wear robes, but it's on the way to his execution, not in his palace. This king's power comes from God, not from the sword. And unlike the pompous king, this king kneels at the feet of those whom he has called to serve and washes them. So the people of Israel turn to Jesus. Surely this king will bring us freedom. He will raise up a new nation among us. Only that isn't what God has in mind. Pilate asks, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answers, My kingdom is not from this world. And friends, he's not talking about heaven. He's saying that in the midst of the kingdoms of this world, the kingdoms of greed, of status, of ruthlessness, of intimidation and power, there stands a kingdom of justice truth, goodness, 
gentleness and peace. In the fullest and deepest sense, this rule has not completely come into our world and our lives. But in another sense, this kingdom is already here. This rule of God is already at work in our church, in our lives, in our world. And the incredibly wonderful news is that we're a part of this gentle reign. We are members of the royal priesthood. We are princes and princesses in this reign where Christ is king. I want to give you two examples of God's gentle rule. And our Barb is so good. She always asks me Tuesday what the title of my sermon is going to be. Tuesday. So if she had called me last night, I would have said, oh, it's God's gentle rule. So if you needed a title today to hang your hat on, there it is. God's gentle rule. One is from a favorite of mine, Hillary Clinton. When she was serving in the Senate, she attended the Senate prayer breakfast, a Republican from Kansas, a guy named Sam Brownback, was the designated speaker that morning. He was going to speak on everything he had learned about his scare with cancer. But he got up to the podium, he looked out, and he saw Hillary Clinton sitting there. And he said, I want to say something. I have said derogatory words about you recently, Hillary, and I want to ask for your forgiveness. Will you forgive me? And Hillary said, yes, I will, and I appreciate your apology. Well, those unlikely partners actually worked together on a legislation for refugees who were experiencing sexual abuse from their country of origin. They worked on that together, and it passed. God's gentle and powerful rule pops up all over the place. It's not about retaliation or revenge. It's about justice and forgiveness and reconciliation. Jesus' reign is powerful, but he conquers in a different way, not by tearing people down or killing them, but by healing people, lifting them up, standing up for them, and ultimately by being killed, by giving his own life. Another example of God's gentle rule hits a bit closer to home. In fact, it happens in someone's bathroom. It's from one of my favorite writers and theologians, and her name is Anne Lamott. True story, I was hiking on the open space with my girlfriend from New York years ago, and Anne Lamott came toward us with her dog and her friends, and I whispered to my friend, here comes Anne Lamott, don't look now. Try to act normal. Don't be a New Yorker. And as she walked by, Annie, who is from Marin, said, good morning, Jean. My dog's name is Jean. We walked by and my friend finally was able to speak. Anne Lamott knows the name of your dog? I said, yeah, she doesn't know my name yet but we're working on that. <laughs> so as is typical of Anne Lamott, her example of God's gentle reign hits a bit closer to home. This story comes from her book entitled Operating Instructions, and I'm always tempted to buy it for a new mother, but then I realize I have no time to read a book, so I think I will wait until the baby is 10 and I will hand them the book. This will bring back some sweet memories for you. So the book is written about Anne and her son Sam's 
first, in Sam's first life. Anne writes, something truly amazing happened to me. A man from church showed up at my front door and smiled and waved to Sam and I. I opened the door and we exchanged pleasantries. He's a white man named Gordon, 50-ish, married to our associate pastor. And after exchanging what's happening in each other's lives, he said, Margaret and I wanted to do something for you, Annie, and the baby. So what I want to ask is, what if a fairy appeared on your doorstep? And what if that fairy said that he or she would do any favor, any favor for you at all, anything you wanted around the house that you felt too exhausted to do by yourself and too ashamed to ask anyone to help you with? Anne replied, I can't even say. It's too horrible. But he finally convinced me to tell him. And I said, it would be to clean my bathroom. He ended up spending an hour scrubbing the toilet, the sink, and the bathtub with Ajax and hot water. I sat on the couch while he worked, watching TV feeling vaguely guilty and nursing Sam to sleep. But it made me feel sure of Christ again, of that kind of love. This man scrubbing a new mother's bathtub is what Jesus means to me. Sisters and brothers, Christ reigns in our world today from the throne of the cross, not with the crushing power of coercion, but with the power of a strong, vulnerable love that unites a splintered world. We receive this power. We are made priests we are made princes and princesses. And we are a part of the glorious, gentle rule of Christ. All power and glory and honor be to Christ forever and ever. Amen. At this point, I would ask for the four new members of our Elam family to come forward. And Junie can come forward too, here. Ray, would you like would you like to be seated? Sure. Okay. I present Ray. Lauren, Paul, Junie, you became a member earlier with your baptism, and Mary, who desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have bought, brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. So I'm going to ask them questions, but as they affirm their holy baptism, my hope and prayer is that you are doing the same. 
So if you would also respond with your sisters and brothers in the bold print. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And now here's your part. Sisters and, oh wait, here's your part. Sorry, I thought we were going to the congregation. Sisters and brothers who are affirming your holy baptism today. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people? To hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper? To proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed? To serve all people following the example of Jesus? And to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? Kind of a lot. I do. This is for you, people of God. Do you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Ray, Lauren, Paul, and Mary, the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forevermore. Amen. Before we rejoice with them, I want to give them a gift, which is from all of you. It is called the Lutheran Handbook. It has the Luther Rose on the front. Well, it doesn't have the Luther Rose. It has Luther on the front, but he's winking instead of the normal kind of stern. <laughs> this book is going to help you in a lot of parts about being a Lutheran. One is how to stay awake in church. If the sermon is boring, you can just take that page and tear it out. <laughs> throw it in the recycling. Um, there's serious stuff, how to confess your sins and receive forgiveness. There's also things, um, how to tell a sinner from a saint. You can figure that one out when you read that. The top ten Bible villains. Anyway, we hope that you enjoy this and you learn some things. I, first of all, don't really need to introduce Lauren and Paul. Lauren is our director of music, and Paul is a teacher of music. He has been a singer for our songs during covid he is our sound tech, which we need more people up there. He can train you. But the most important thing about these two wonderfully gifted people, aside from being incredibly wonderful to work with, is that they are the parents of Junie. <laughs> uh, wait, there is yours. <laughs> Mary comes to us from... Bethel Lutheran Church in Cupertino. She served as a deacon there, and she also served on their church council. She comes to our Tuesday night Bible studies, and she is a retired nurse. So don't everybody go rushing up to her and say, there's this little thing I have right here. Can you tell me what I do about this cough? But I'm sure if now and then, She's not a doctor, she's not a, a working nurse now, but she worked with people who have cancer, correct? 
Yes, and she has a big heart. I've seen that in our Tuesday night Bible studies. The most exciting thing about Mary is that her daughter was in the Olympics. Oh. <laughs> there you go, Mary. I have known Ray for almost 20 years, I think. Yes, and he was always the guy at Marin Lutheran Church who would stand and welcome everybody to our book club. And then at the end of church, he would come up to me, Pastor, are you coming to book club this Thursday night? <laughs> The best part of Ray is his family, two of whom are here, Lori and Jeff. We had to say goodbye to Margot earlier this year, Lori, and that was his beloved wife. And so we welcome you. He is living with John in Katati, my first visit there, so that was nice. And there is a patio at Marin Lutheran Church, and there are benches around for when we have worship services. And you can sit in a chair or you can sit on those benches. Ray surprised us all by coming to church, building the benches. I said, Bev, where did those benches come? Oh, Ray Gurgis came up early in the morning and put them up. Mm -hmm. He also built, I think, built the cabin in Forestville, right? This is a lovely cabin they have. And he added a few extra rooms onto his home in Sausalito. So we are delighted that you are joining us and that you bring John every Sunday. And we are delighted that you are all members of our family here at Elam. And Ray, there is your, I'm sure Ray will have comments about that book. You'll probably want to do a book club on it. <laughs> Let us rejoice with these sisters and brothers in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, you sent your son Jesus to testify to the truth. We pray for preachers, missionaries, evangelists, and teachers who carry out your forgiveness and love to this world. Fill their words and actions with compassion and kindness so that your truth will shine. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, bless our new members. 
Paul, Lauren, Ray, and Mary. May they always feel welcomed and supported by their new Elam family and inspired to serve you in this community. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to lead us into the way of peace. Direct the members of international alliances in choosing a nonviolent path toward the future. Give them humility and wisdom to make just decisions to benefit all. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to rule in all times and places. We pray for the friends of our congregation who are unable to join our worship in person and for all who are sick and suffering, especially for Carol, Jim, Audrey, Robin, Sue, Renata, Dawn, Bob, Carolyn, Richard, Nancy, Dave, Jean, Christina, Ruth, Segrin, Shirley, Irene, Diane, those battling COVID, and those we, say, we name silently and aloud. Join their prayers with ours and unite them with us in the body of Christ. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our beginning and our end, your beloved people shine like the brightness of the sky. We thank you for the lives of all who rest in your eternal mercy, from famous saints to the people we have loved, especially Eleanor Lyon. Assure us of your resurrection promise. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, bless all those celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, and celebrations of all kinds this week. Fill our hearts with love and acceptance. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, God our hope. Oops, sorry, That's I'm right. stealing your thunder. <laughs> <laughs> God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray together the offertory prayer. Holy God, the earth is yours and everything in it, yet you have chosen to dwell among your creatures. Come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine and strengthen us to be your body for the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Would you please stand for the passing of the peace? The peace of Christ be with you always. Would you please pass the, the peace to your fellow princes and princesses in Christ. <laughs> peace, Prince The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise.
night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And if you are at home watching, you may take your bread, the body of Christ given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me and those at home, the blood of Christ shed for you. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated after we commune our communion assistants and our musicians, then the usher will direct you forward and I will give you some bread and you'll go to either side and take a cup of wine or grape juice. The grape juice is the lighter color. We also have gluten-free wafers if you need that instead. The gifts of God for the people of God come for all is now ready. and the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you, Kevin. The body of Christ given for you, Alex. The body of Christ given for you, Ed. Oh, okay, yeah. So if you can set that over there, well, set it right here and I'll can...
please stand as you are able and let us pray the prayer after communion. Blessed Jesus, at this table you have been for us both host and meal. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gifts until that day when all feast together at your heavenly banquet. Amen. And now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor, you princes and princesses, and give you peace. Amen.